Okay. okay, so we are back, and I'm Kate with Tight Match, and I am here with Dave Superpowers. Dave, would you introduce yourself and tell a little bit about what you do? Yes, yeah, Shani and I, we are attempting to track personality type using some type of objective method. And the method that we're using is we'll put ourselves in two separate rooms, we'll watch the same person, and then we'll work them down a little checklist and see if we got the same type. Out of, it's now turned into 512 personality types. So that's kind of what we do, and then we share on our YouTube channel and our website. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I am a huge fan, and I've been telling people to go to Dave's Superpowers and check it out because you guys really like, you know, the 16 personalities is one thing, but you guys take it to like so many other levels, and it's just fascinating how deep it can go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's turned into a real fractal of unraveling that it was giving yeah. me anxiety every time it flipped from 16 to 32 to 64. I was desperately trying to put the brakes on it wanting yeah. to keep it smaller and it's gotten all the way to 512 which we're actually realizing it's technically 1024 because you got to count male and female so oh yeah. oh i didn't know that that's interesting too okay do you have any videos about that yet uh we'll mention no. it here and there uh we'll be doing okay. more but yeah we're really realizing like in the end we want to we want to be able to write personality profiles for all of the types and we're seeing for example let's say people that are my exact same type that are males They'll often look like me and act like me and talk like me. And so kind of a profile that's written mm -hmm. for, you know, males, especially if they're the same age that are the same type, there's going to be a lot in common. Totally different for a female, you know, because yeah. you're it be a different experience on for that type, you know. The the lookalike thing is super fascinating to me. Yeah. I really I would love to see all of the ones that like are, the women that are, like are my exact same type and see that pattern. Yeah. Um, but masculinity and femininity is something that I wanted to ask you about in terms of like, you guys talk about masculine function versus feminine functions. Like you could have masculine FI or feminine FI and how those manifest differently. And I wanted to ask you in terms of compatibility, does that affect compatibility? And I want to take a guess at it. My guess would be that a masculine function would match with a feminine function. Is that right. true? That's what we're seeing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that so is how absolutely does that work? work? Uh, so where we're at now is like, so let me back up a little bit. When we type people, whether it's clients or friends, family, celebrities, we'll just kind of unofficially, not unofficially, but kind of casually just take their picture, their name, and then we'll log them away in the, uh, a, a Google Doc where we have people that are of the same or similar type. And so as that kind of builds up, you get a lot of interesting stuff. We're not really writing down yet all of the fascinating data that we're seeing. We're just kind of keeping track of it and right. going, all right, we want to study genetic issues or health issues or LGBT, gender, like all this kind of stuff is coming up. Um, relationships are we're starting to see because as we're typing people that like, you know, we'll type Johnny and then, you know, a month later his wife will come through mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. So, you know, and then from, from there, yeah. it gets very subjective because it's like, I think they have a pretty good relationship. And now I know what types they are, at least according okay. to our system. And then you'll find other people you're like, wow, they have a horrible relationship. You know, at least my opinion from looking at them, you know, comparing it to other people. And then it's like, oh, that's interesting that their type is this way and that way. And so like, we're seeing that when we come back around and we actually dive into the data, because a lot of the info is still buried in the, you know, we got, we got to go through people's lives and ask them a lot of questions, get this stuff figured out. So just my guesses, my perspectives of what we seem to be saying this far. And again, I'm prefacing all this because we're just way on the beginning. Of course, of yes. I, yeah. I really like how you always give all these disclaimers because people <laughs> take it way too far. And I've been doing this too long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I get it. So no. now, now let me get to actually sharing something yes. is, is it does seem to be exactly what you're saying is the masculine is attracted to the feminine. And that's going to be through like, let's say like, like Shani and I coincidentally happen to be exact opposite. So masculine FI, feminine FI, masculine TE, feminine TE all the way down the road. And, and we're seeing that consistently that, that people tend to be attract sexually attracted to uh, people that are of their opposite sexual energies, you know, according yeah. to their functions, you know. Um, and then we're also interestingly seeing is that where you kind of get like a buddy factor is your commonality. So, for example, with Shani and I, it's TE. Like we like for Christmas time, we drove all the way down to L.A. It's a thousand mile car ride. And it, it was over too fast because we just we love just sitting there talking about random, stupid, logical things and figuring out and banging the blocks. And, and so like the TE is our commonality function. So it's kind of like what you have in common is kind of your buddy factor. 
And then what you have opposite is kind of the attraction factor. We okay. kind of see. And she has masculine TE and you have feminine TE. Correct. Okay. So do you find that you kind of like yield a little bit to her TE? Yeah. 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 Okay. Because yeah. I would think like two masculines would just like yeah. bang heads with each other all day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What we'll see with that is... Um, is because I'm just thinking of my friends and friends or people we've met that have like two masculine T's um, is that then one will one will be forced to play a role. Like, so, for example, um, like girls that I would date in high school or college, you know, I wasn't, you know, you know you're just, you know, you're, you're meeting whoever is in kind of like your small group, you know. So, like thinking of the girls that I've dated that were like more introverted than me they would force me to play more of the ej role and then when i would date like more masculine ejs they would force me to play like a different role so like if you so what i'm seeing is like if you have two people that are exactly the same say they're both lead te both masculine te one of them will end up kind of taking the feminine te role does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then if they leave the relationship it could go the other way and you'll see it in like friend groups you mm -hmm. know like Say say you play the funny, goofy person, but then like you have a new friend group and that role is already filled, then you're you now gotta be the quiet one. You know, kind of that 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 kind of dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Interesting. So yeah. it will depend. Like at first, if two dominant like masculine TEs come together will they like kind of battle it out to see who's going to end up being the dominant one I, and then the I, other one would yield <laughs> like i, I like, like in, a way, position. in a way yeah i think yeah. i think kind of in a way you could say that you know like and just like looking from my own experience like if, if i guess if you run that theory and look at it that that that, that interpretation does make sense like if you just think back in relationships that i've been in or whatever or yourself or anybody it's like there is that first couple of months where you're kind of you know, testing things out and okay, do I insult you or do you insult me or am I scared of you? Or are you scared of me? Like there's kind of that settling, that kind of a pecking order kind of thing is established, you know, just random thing that will, we pay a lot of attention to like prisons because you get a lot of like, you know, prison documentaries, we can't get enough of them because you get yeah. a real raw experience of like the human, you know, at, at their, at their core. Yeah. And it's the same thing you, you, with the guys that come into a prison, they got to quickly establish, wait, do I eat you or do you eat me? Where am I in the, the pecking order? So Kind of feels like the same thing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Huh. I don't know. Yeah. I just want to take a moment to like process it, but I can't. I, I got to move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, so do you, do you guys type um, celebrity couples as well that you get this data from? Yeah. Or is it just like the ones that come through you? No, we, we started with celebrities. We, yeah. we, we prefer to do celebrities. <laughs> Because you can get so much more about their life without all the embarrassment of talking to them, you know, face to face, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, we started the with the first few thousand people we type for celebrities. It's also really great to have access to the time machine of video. You know, you can go all the way back into Brad Pitt's life, you know, 20, 30 years and see the kind of development of the type as well. So, yeah, we do a lot of celebrities. Yeah. Do you look at like, oh, these two ended up breaking up yeah can you kind of see that coming a little bit like oh, um, these two are these types that probably won't last yeah yeah but we're not but so far we haven't been good at predicting like it hasn't turned out like we're like oh these are going to be horrible and they're like still together and they're fine or okay. these aren't going to make it and then it goes the other way around or whatever you know but like yeah. once like so looking far. back yeah yeah so yes. far yeah 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 okay interesting it, yeah um, all right. Another thing I wanted to ask you about is like the animals. The animals are super interesting to me. So yeah. those are blast, consume, play, and sleep. Right. So my hypothesis, I've had a lot of fun like hypothesizing what I would think would happen with these is that um, you'd want animals, you wouldn't want like two lead plays together. I think that they would exhaust each other. Right. Um, I think I am high play. Um, I think this is quite obvious. And I really like people who are high sleep. Right. <laughs> because right. they calm me. And right. like I, when I'm with another high play, it's really fun, but we just build each other up, build each other up. And then I'm like, right. oh my God. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's exactly what we see. That's exactly yeah? what we see. Is that it, it, yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Is is normally it's exactly that. The high play will be with the sleep, the blast will be with the consume. 
<laughs> and so it's like an attraction of the introvert extrovert energy, you know, because the animals are, it's just two functions working together. So, you know, the, the NI and the FI, those two introverted functions are creating the sleep, you know, preserving self, self reflection. Uh, the play is two extroverted functions working together. You know, TE and SE, it's, it's learning, like what we're doing right now in video is play. We're just throwing yeah. chaos back and forth at each other and learning as we go. We're not learning through books. And then later tonight, we'll go away and process and sleep energy, you know. But yeah, right. we see absolutely that, that, a, that a lot of couples, that they are attracted through the sexual opposites. And then someone's got to play the introverted or extroverted, you know, opposite as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that um, it's not perfect. Like, okay, blast and consume would go together because okay someone's blasting out the information and someone is then consuming that information right. can't just have two people blasting information at each other right that sounds annoying um, yeah but you but i don't think that like the play blast like tony robinson type would match well with like the consume sleep right because it's so it's so, so much. far i know like, it's, how does that work like, it, it it's so that's a great question because like Shani and I were realizing as we're looking at ourselves on this this massive personality spectrum, we're very ambiverts. We're very in the middle. Like our sexual yeah. energy is kind of in the middle as individuals. Our our, our extrovert energy, uh, introvert energy is kind of in, in the middle. So like for her and I that are like towards the middle of the bell curve to have opposites, it's kind of like it's not that big a deal. But like seeing people like you're mentioning, like Tony Robbins would be the most extreme. You know, he he didn't end up budding with somebody who is the most quiet you know so it's like i don't know like like um it seems like it seems i don't know like i would guess like if you're in the middle of any bell curve mm -hmm. things are a little bit easier when you're on the poles it is it, things get more extreme you know an extreme yeah. extrovert versus an extreme introvert but i do want to say like 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 the more data we get in then things get a little bit more clear and like whenever like we'll use a specific it really kind of falls apart like it's like we can't even really prove somebody's specific type. We're just saying, hey, look, statistically, Shani and I keep getting the same types as each other most of the mm -hmm. time. And then from that data, that's adding up. There's something interesting. But you can grab any one person and be like, you could have got that one wrong. Like, absolutely. Could have got that one wrong. And same with like relationships. It's like we're seeing, generally speaking, there's this opposite dynamic. But when you go and grab specific relationships, there's so many contradictions. Oh, these two are too extroverted. They shouldn't be together. Yet they are. They're, they're these yeah. two are too masculine. They shouldn't be together. Yet they are. Or they are too opposite, and they shouldn't be together. Yet they are. And there seems to be just a lot of um, movability. Like you had a video, and and also on your Instagram where you had talked about like mm. fifty fifty, the different yeah. kind of factors. We're seeing the same kind of thing. There's a lot of. You do want to respect the general clustering of the opposites, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of other dynamics that are going on there to yeah. make a good a good or bad relationship. Does that make sense? It's kind of a mess, yeah. but. That frustrates me a lot. The people, they get me wrong on that, I think, or that they'll make comments about like, you can't rely completely on um, type to determine right. your competitive. And I'm like, I, no one said that you could here. It's right. just like, but it matters. Like you shouldn't ignore it, okay? Yeah. That's like, that's like, I don't want to take someone's personality into consideration at all when picking a mate. Like, what are you picking? Just on looks? Like, right. This person right. is in my area and looks good. Like, no, that's not how you pick either. So, right, right. Um, yeah, it yeah. seems to be. It seems to be a lot of this information is useful after the fact. Like, it's mm -hmm. very useful. Like, here's some relationships that are going really good. Can we figure out as much as we can what commonalities, or similar similarities, or patterns, or clustering in the data that is happening? But it doesn't necessarily mean that if you repeat that same equation, you're going to have success the next time. For example. I'll meet plenty of girls that are Shanny same type. And I'm like, yeah, they're cute, but there's not that like mm -hmm. that that yeah. life attraction. Like Shanny and I, we both grew up with a chip on our shoulder. We both were entrepreneur. We both wanted to do something. There's a lot of things that doesn't that that's not type related that we had in common that really made that yeah. connection, you know? Yeah. I and and I say that a lot, like, okay, um, this type and this type, they're very compatible, but not everyone who's this type is going to be compatible with this right. person. It's like they might be the wrong ESTP for you. Right. Like, totally. Yeah. Totally. I know. I know. It's yeah. I feel like we got a long way to go. But one thing I want to say, looking at what you're doing, 
with just taking some method of collecting and organizing data and then using that to kind of match people up. Like as Shani and I were really talking about it, um, of like a site like what you're doing, the work of what you're doing, it's like it's solving a very deep problem that Shani and I are realizing yeah. that that we wrestle with as well. Even our parents wrestled with of like, you just don't have any friends. Like it's mm -hmm. hard to find somebody who's at least in your ecosphere because you don't want to put yourself out of like, I got to go to some random meetup and oh my God, there's nobody here that I would ever want to talk to, but now they want to talk to me and how do I, this is not going to work. And now you're work. stuck there. Like, yeah. I can't leave because that would be rude. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So having some kind of, it's almost like a pre-communication platform. Can I filter out or see or show me people like me or not like me or opposite of me or same of me, you know, some type of tool like that to solve the problem of we've all kind of been trapped in our houses in this internet age. And then how the heck do we meet somebody, you know? People are very lonely. And I, I struggled with loneliness for a, a very long time. And actually like this, creating this platform and like this community that I now have has has helped a lot. Um, right. And I actually met my partner through it. So wow. it's perfect. Yeah, see? Yeah. Um, I am the first success story. That's great. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Um, but yeah, and I think, what I'm trying to do is just create more efficiency. Yeah. In, right. In finding people. Like, yeah. Um, it's really good because it's solving. It's solving yeah, it's solving a real problem. It's a it's a real issue. It's a real problem. And it feels like it feels like too like what the internet in a way has created is also it's also providing a a, a resolution tool. You know. Mm -hmm. So of uh, finding people through algorithms or whatever. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. This is going to happen anyway. Right. This is where things are going. Um, yeah. You know, AI is going to be able to to do this in just a matter of years. Yeah. This is like step one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys have talked about like AI using uh, the personality types as well in a couple of your videos. Yeah, it's looking more. It's looking more likely too. I used to be more on the side of like. Uh, it looks like the, the stuff that we're doing anyways, that like it seems like it'd be more genetically tracked because like a lot of the things that, that will show up when we type people, we just start, you know, throwing them in these docs. And we have 512 docs or actually, you know, 1,024 if you count male and female. And so you got to wait until you get about 10 of a particular type. You know, but if you have like, a, you know, a thousand yeah. docs to fill up, like you just have one in every doc for quite a while, you know. Mm -hmm. And so once we start getting like 10 in each doc, then you'll we start to see things like hair color will be similar or like height is, is a big one, like height and weight yeah. is, is something that clusters around. Um, and so when we saw like 23andMe and Ancestry.com, like the stuff that they were tracking, like allergic to cilantro mm -hmm. and uh, different, uh, you know, weird kind of allergies and hair and, and ears and nose and stuff like that. We're like, oh yeah, we're tracking this. We're seeing the same stuff popping up. So we thought that this might be most likely be tracked eventually through the genetic thing, which it still might be. But now over the past few months, Shani and I have been, been kind of working on our typing procedures, like as we're typing clients every week and, and people for the class and stuff. And we're getting the coins down a little bit easier where we are able to kind of pick out people's phrases. Like for example, yeah. a, a decider, literally, if you're, if you're literally tracking the words, they're gonna say people doing, people doing, these types of words, people, you, me, mm. they, and they're yeah. talking about action-oriented things a lot more. Observers, mm -hmm. you know, like they're gonna be talking about the thing and the future yeah. and the information and the data. And they're just, they're just sitting back observing stuff. Uh -huh. And so we're like, this is getting easier for us to track the surface level words and, and, and kind of narrow these coins down. Mm -hmm. I mean, still you wanna to get to know the person. We're like, that wouldn't be too hard of a stretch to get AI to, and train it on these words to play kind of the, um, you know, if you hear more of these words, throw it this right, way. Right, right. That way, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then breaking it down a coin at a time, too. So, you know, I think it could definitely filter it down, you know, to maybe 90%. Act, I don't know, something like that. So, oh, God, yeah. that would be so amazing. I, I wish this already existed. I know. There, there's feels... so many mistakes. So yeah. <laughs> people yeah. get upset when I, when I even like talk about how like, oh, a lot of people are mistyped. Like, oh, they get upset about it. I'm like, oh, I yeah. didn't say you. I just said a lot of people are mistyped. But, I know. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, that would be amazing if it was just like a machine. This is accurate. Talk into the machine. Spit right. out your type. Now we know. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't have to have that awkward conversation of like, well, yeah. I don't know. It's what Shani and I both got. I know yeah. you don't agree. Like, yeah. I can imagine. I, I don't know how you guys handle it. I don't offer typing services because I've, I've typed a few people and I'm just like, oh, never again. Like yeah. telling you that you were wrong after you, they base their whole belief system on like they're this type and then they find out they're wrong and it like crashes their world down. Oh, sorry. All like, day long. All day long. Yeah. That's why you asked earlier, like, oh yeah, we love typing celebrities because we don't have to have that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we've had to put a lot of aggressive negativity on the front end of disclaimers and mm -hmm. you're going to get your type. You're not going to agree with us and we're not going to help you. We got to be real a-holes on the front end. Um, and for most people, because we're so aggressive on, on making that known that when we actually do type them that, you know, even though I'd say about half of them are, are rather surprised what we type them as, they're still kind of softened up to, to kind of be ready to kind of go and process that through. And then a lot of people too will talk to them, you know, and a lot of, I see a lot of people too, like I, I'd say a large majority within about two or three weeks, they kind of get settled and they start to see it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, it takes a while. Yeah. Like, I've made peace with it. I've I've gone through the five stages of grief. And now, yeah, that, that, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. It does and like, now I can be reborn as this type. Like, that's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good that you guys do like, I think it's like 60 or whatever days that you have to be like right. on your channel watching the videos before you get typed. That make that makes a lot of sense. Because then they get used to your system and they can maybe come to terms a little bit like, oh, maybe I'm not what I thought because of this new information right. I'm learning. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure if it helps, but it sounds exactly. smart. Yeah. Exactly. We're softening them up. Yeah. 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 But it's, it, on all honesty, though, like when we step back, like I totally get it. It's a, like seeing the data too, like it, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating to, we can almost, we can't, we, we kind of sometimes claim we can't, but we really can't. We can almost predict what someone is going to type themselves as like, Ooh. oh, you're an, you're an INFP. You're going to, you're going to type yourself as a, as an ESTJ or you're, you're an ESFP. You're going to type yourself as whatever. Like, cause we'll even see people, you know, like they'll see themselves consistently, you know, in this upside down opposite fashion rather uh -huh. cons consistently, you know, I also do remember like, we had talked about that a year or two ago on YouTube and our channel. And at first it was something like 90 something percent of people that came through were all upside down according to what we were getting them as. And you fast forward till now, that ratio is way down. Oh, we're really? getting every week that are getting themselves the same exact type or, or like one click off of what we're typing them as. Um, and so it's helped a lot where people are like, okay, I'm naturally going to want to see myself upside down. And then they're able to kind of work that out. I think defining saviors and demons is a big tricky one, you know, because everyone like, like, oh, I, I feel like I'm being taken in. I'm the martyr. Like, no, I know. I know you feel that way okay. that one time once a week, but you're not really the martyr. You're not really killing yourself yeah. for the try. You know what I mean? You got to have that conversation with the person. Yeah, so, that makes sense because that hurts the most. So that stands out. The Yes. Yeah. Right. And then they're not tracking. People aren't tracking what are you doing all day long? Like right now I'm blasting in a saver state. I don't even know I'm doing it. I'm just checked mm -hmm. out. I'm gone. I'll like wake up when I'll like read something like, well, that's me. I researched tonight for 10 minutes. That's me. Because <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's like, that was hard. So yeah, you know, right. You really like admire that. Right. Uh, and the rest of the day, you're, you're just on straight autopilot. It's, it's the savers that are the problem. It's it's the savers are where you're you're just on a nonstop rampage of addiction, which mm -hmm. just you know knocks you off the track. So that, yeah, that brings me to an, another question because you have this double activation of functions. Does that affect compatibility at all? That the, that kind of ties in like introvert extrovert, you know. Okay. So the animals, the, the animals are everybody's got you know everybody's got four functions. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got two masculine functions and two feminine functions. So just real quick for people out there, like, yeah, just just say like a an INFJ, right? The, the the internet's favorite type. So you have like an INFJ, and you got the NIFETISE, and so you have four functions, 
that you have two observers, two deciders, and then two of those are going to be masculine, two of those are going to be feminine. So if your NI is masculine, your your SE is feminine. If your FE is feminine, your TI is masculine. So you get the opposites on the coins. And then the animals come in, and they'll come in in all sorts of different which ways. You know, you can have an INFJ that is very feminine or very masculine, and then you can have an, have an INFJ that is like, like uh, sleep, blast, play, or sleep, consume, play, and like different arrangements that the animals come in. And so as the animals come in and they're kind of pinging the wires of the function, so to say, they're, we call them like activating. So like, you know, that's activating the first and third once through sleep. I know this. I, I, no, I, I love that you're doing this because usually you have like your little visual come up yeah. in the corner, but you're like, no, I'll just use my fingers. Yeah, it's great. like, uh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I can visualize it. So okay, great, great. Go for it. Yeah. Blasting it out. So like sleep would be that and then blast would be that. So you're getting, you're getting a double activation on that top function, that top NI or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, anyways, you end up with this arrangement where some functions are getting activated by the animals more than others. And so therefore you can have an INFJ that is doubly activated on NI, and then some are double, doubly activated on SE. And those are fascinating. Those are the ones we call glass lizards, where you'll get an INF, Jerry Seinfeld, where you get this, this INFJ that is consuming sensory in a safer state. And it's just a fast, but it's still, you run, you run all the parts over and over again, still an INFJ, just all wired up weird. And so that then, what, that then ends up creating a lot of introverted energy because say the introverted functions are getting pinged more you know, so so to answer your question, that the double activated kind of stuff, it really just ties to the ends up being the introverted extroverted type of energy of the person at the end of the day. You know, yeah. So for, so Shani, for example, I'm double activated on my top blaster functions, and she's double activated on her lower consume functions. You know, because mm -hmm. we're opposite. So. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Do I have any other questions? Oh, and then I was going to ask um, about jumpers affecting compatibility. Because, like, um, an INFJ, again, who is um, NITI, would they look for somebody who has a higher T function? They, they might. Yeah, they might. But they, like an INFJ that's NITI, that's going to be lead sleep. You know, the NI and the TI is creating the yeah. sleep. So oftentimes they'll find somebody with savior play. They may have play first or at least second, you know, yeah. we'll usually see that. So like a lot of times we'll see jumpers dating other jumpers because a sleep is looking for a play. A play is looking for a sleep. Um, and then the same with the, the blast and the consume. Those are people that that are kind of like the standard Myers-Briggs types where they just have their top two functions as their saviors. Um, that's in theory, you know, like it kind yeah, of generally works so that way. This is hypothetical. Like, yeah. yeah, but like, again, a lot of it, I really see kind of my interpretation of it is if if you would look at all these factors as introvert, extrovert, blast, consume, masculine, feminine, it seems to be that we end up playing the role. Like in, in a relationship, everybody's unconsciously divvying out, okay, which role, who, who do I play here? So if you're mm -hmm. naturally masculine sensory and that one's feminine sensory, then the roles just automatically just filter themselves out right away but if there's like a competition and then that's sometimes where they'll they'll end up sorting it out you know so it's like you can you can be if you're with somebody you can be more playful than you normally are because you you have to step up and fill that void and, and shani and i we were married before you know we both have x ex, x's you know we got married like 20 and um and, and in those relationships, it was like we were both forced because the, the combati compatibility was all off. So like it would force us to be somebody we're not because there because there's such a void in the relationship there, you know. So a lot of a lot of movability of if you don't get somebody your exact, exact, exact opposite, you can kind of like fill those voids in. Everybody's going to take the role one way or another, seems like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting. I don't know. These are just I, my, my I know, I observations, know. Yes. theories, personally at the time, you know. Yes. More disclaimers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it'd be really interesting, like with your theory, to build a theory of like a super match. Like right. these two types match well, but if this one is 
high play and this one is high sleep and th they have this masculine and this right. they have this feminine then that would be a super yeah match right right and and i think i uh, that's a really good point i think there's a couple different ways you can do that one you can do it the long way which is kind of the way we're doing it where we're trying to like figure out every single sensory and get all the data just right and accurate but it's going to take decades to get all that done but like kind of the approach that you're doing where you're just kind of having people come in and then just playing with different algorithms or tests or whatever, there can be a lot of organic sifting and sorting out and you have no idea how it's even working. Like, so for example, like say the big AI ad machines that are working for Facebook, like they don't know psychology, like say somebody in, in our field does where we get real specific on, on understanding. They just, all they know is like these types of people match with these types of products. Why? Because they've just thrown enough crap at the wall over the yeah. years that they've just sifted and figured it out and sorted it out. And just through brute force of mm -hmm. trying enough things, I think you can find a lot of like, okay, the people that answer the test this way tend to match up with the people that answer the test this way. Why? We don't even really know. All we know is that this kind of works because we've sifted it out over time. You get in those, those AI reps, you know, where you're just you're just blast playing, trying every combination randomly until it starts to work. You don't even know how the heck it works. You can figure that out later, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reverse engineer the process. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I, I haven't looked into it. This is my guess. But I'm sure some of the dating sites that have been around, probably the longer the better. You know, if you could talk to people in, in the back room there, they would probably say like, oh, yeah, like this is what we've seen, you know, work itself out over time just from having the sheer amounts of data. It just starts to yeah. settle itself to some degree, you know? Yeah, that's something I'd love to have, like over time with the app to start ga gathering data on like who fits well together, who ends up together in a successful I, I think it'll, relationship. I think it'll, I think it'll slap you in the face. I think eventually, yeah. it'll, like, that's what happened to us is you're just doing your job and then all of a sudden, like some pattern will, will come mm -hmm. jumping out. You know, you don't even have to look for it, it'll hit you. Yeah, that'll be so cool. Very interesting. All right. Well, that's all my questions. Um, unless you have any else, anything else that you want to add? I had some questions for you. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where did, I saw you had a video um, speaking Spanish. What? Tell me. Uh, mm. Where did you learn how to speak Spanish so well? I spent a couple of years living in Spain, and my day job is that I am a Spanish teacher. Oh wow, that's great! Yeah. <laughs> So I do that in the morning and then in the afternoon I create my app. That's great. Do you have your app also being worked in, in Spanish language? No, not currently. Yeah. Um, it's not, MBTI is not that popular in Spain or in Mexico and South America. And this idea I had was that like, okay, maybe I could popularize it if I like start making MBTI videos, especially like compatibility videos in Spanish, but then I kind of left it. For a while. Um, sure. The reason I did the first one in Spanish was actually that I was very nervous about putting myself out there on YouTube because yeah. people are so ruthless. Right. Um, so I thought, well, if most of the MBTI community can't understand me. <laughs> right. It's a good practice. Yeah. I could make that first step yeah. this way and then I'm more comfortable and I can move on in English. That's right. That's so genius. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what we do. Like I started in the RC airplane industry. Like, let me start with something I don't care at as much just to yeah. start the practice and get moving, you know? Yeah. Um, and now how long have you been working on this app? Uh, about a year. It, only a year. Wow. It's going to come out in a couple of weeks. So what does that mean? What is like, you know, not like, that I have. like, Yeah. No, it's going to be published to the Google and iOS okay. um, stores. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, because yeah. I, I I frequently visit app stores. You know, me and all my downloading of apps. I can't you even should download the app. I mean, just like go for it, play around with it, I... like, but not date. I don't know. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> now, um, interesting. So now, do you have have you already tested? You know, on a smaller scale with people and stuff. Uh, there has been like micro testing along the way of different features of the app, but not of the app in its entirety. Yeah. So I'm the app in its entirety is almost done. So um, the goal is to roll it out. And basically, my my whole market right now is other MBTI nerds. Right. Very, very excited about it, very into it, and they're going to be my initial market 
um, who can tell me like what's wrong with it, what needs improvement. And I have a lot of ideas for like future iterations that I want to yeah. roll out, like it's simple for the first version. And then once I have those bugs fixed and add on some other features that I think will be interesting to the general populace, I want to market right. it towards them. Like people who've maybe taken 16 personalities, but they don't know anything else beyond that. Right. Right. Okay. Well, wow. I want to open it to more, to more people, not just people who are super into this. Cause that's very small. And, you know, maybe somebody who's right for you isn't crazy into MBTI. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't know, just just my, you know, insights on this kind of stuff over time. It's like it's always great. I've seen a business to like start specific, start with niche within a niche within a niche, because then you can always go out. Like I've I've made mistakes in the past with business stuff where if, if I start too general or too many things and then I go, ah, you know, really what's working is this over here. And then you kind of end up backpedaling, you know, yeah. and then you have to tell 20 percent of the customers, oh, we don't do that anymore because, you know, actually it's over here now. So it's always better to start small and then go out, I've found. Now, so like if so you're going to be hitting people in the Myers-Briggs community, the 16 types community, and then um, and then also is it it's geared more towards dating as well? Yeah, the first version is dating only, but then later versions I want to include a friends feature. Right. Yeah, yeah that's it that's was, where yeah. A lot of people are asking for it and honestly, I didn't think that that would be so so popular of a request, but a lot of people are asking for it. So I think I'm going to try to roll that out in version two. I mean, yeah. that's a, a simple rollout, but the original vision of the app was to find a relationship. That's yeah. Count me in for version two. Cause yeah. like Shani and I, like it, it's an upsetting feeling when we find people in town that have been in the personality community for 15 years and they live 5.6 miles away. And, and you're yeah. like, you feel like you, you did something wrong. Out. Like all these years, <laughs> yeah. what happened? How did I like we went to the same grocery store, you know? So yeah. a a friend thing of like, yeah, who in town is interested in this kind of stuff? Um, and I think too, I, I, I think that specifically with the Myers Briggs community, I think that is it's specific, but it's 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 obsessive for the people that are in it. But I think it's also large enough that there are a lot of people in that community, you know, when yeah. you add them all up, like um Look at uh, Frank James's channel. Like, how many subscribers oh, does that guy have? Like, yeah. huge community. There's a lot of people yeah. that are in town that are interested in the person in Myers Briggs personality. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's true. I think that he's very accessible to a lot of people because he does serious videos, but he also does like some goofy ones. So, if you don't know a lot about it, you can start on like that level. Right. And it's not like, all this like just data and just right. like right. letters because people get like overwhelmed. Right. Uh, but it gives you an idea how big the, the community is. Yeah. A lot yeah, out there. It is. I actually, I really like 16 personalities, even though like, people hate it because it's a, such an inaccurate test and they talk bad about it. But I love it for bringing so many people into it because right. it really popularized it now. Look at how much MBTI has blown up yeah, recently. Totally. And yeah. most of those people started there. Yeah, that's how we look at it too. We yeah. we judge each person, entrepreneur, company, website based upon the role that they're fulfilling, and that's, that's the same way we same way we look at it. Sixteen person, they're not claiming to be the scientific most accurate test. They're not claiming that. You know, they're claiming to be kind of a entry level. Hey, have fun and you know a thing, and they're yeah. doing great at it. You know, and you've got a little picture and the name to go right. with it. To like, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. So. Well, great stuff. Shani and I think you got something really good here. Yeah, I think you're putting it together really well and just you being the leader of it as well. But like, it seems like you're really attacking a real problem in life. And that is people trying to meet each other. And to be able to get the specificness of the personality community is just like, I don't know, it's exciting for, you know, being somebody in the community to have something that specific, you know? Yeah. So it's great. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, good luck with the launch. Thanks. Have a good night. All right.